Hi, I'm James with Networks Audio Video, and today I'm going to show you how to properly configure input channels on your digital mixer. If you're a Church AV volunteer, you're in the right place because I produce videos for you to teach, to show you how to, and to train. And today, our training will be done using an Allen Heath Q16 digital mixer, 16 channels. And what I'll be doing is showing you how to properly configure an input channel or in this particular case, a microphone. The presetta procedure will be the same for additional types of microphones. It will also be the same if you're setting up, let's say, an instrument or some other device like a laptop, CD, Blu-ray player. First off, what I want to do is just give you a quick overview of what we're going to be looking at. And so, in order to configure input channels, the steps that we'll need to follow is we need to set the input gain, we need to adjust the fader. We also need to know, do we have proximity effect? And if we do, we need to EQ for that. And then also afterwards, we want to EQ for clarity. So to start off, I want to show you a certain relationship, which is sometimes a little bit baffling for you as a volunteer, and that is the fader. And so I'm going to start off by showing you a picture of the fader. And as we see, the faders, they have uh, the ability to set the volume. And a lot of times, uh, we have been setting these in such a way where we think that this is the proper use of the fader. You know, whether this channel should be here, and maybe this channel should be there, and this channel should be, you know, at different varying levels. And we've always thought that that was the proper thing or the right way to set a channel or to set a volume for a channel. And in fact, that's not quite true because there's a certain relationship between the gain before that and the fader. And that's why we need to set that gain. It's quite important for us to set that input gain because once that gain is set, where our fader will be able to work in the way it was intended. Let's look again at that fader because what's important to note about it is that if we look at the middle section of the fader, this is about the middle of the fader, we'll notice that numbers go from an infinity symbol in, a, in below and a 10 above. And this middle section is near a 10 as well. Uh, what I want to note is, is that at the zero mark here, which is about three quarters of the way up the fader, we could say any numbers below that would be negatives. In other words, negative uh, 5, negative 10, negative 20, negative 30, and so on. And any numbers above would be positive, so plus 5, plus 10. And at that halfway mark, we have a negative 10 going down negative 20 minus 30, 40 to the infinity, which you would think because of the way the steps are graded, it might be minus 50, but it's actually closer to about minus 60 or so. So if we have from minus 10 to minus 60, in this area, we have a, a range which is actually about 50 in terms of the total change. But when we have a change from this minus 10 to plus 10, that change now is only about 20. So we have 20 in the upper half, 50 in the lower half. So in other words, there's less change that takes place in the upper half. Not only that, there is less change near the zero mark between the five, uh, the plus five and the minus five. If we notice, there's a much greater distance here. And there was an intent, a reason behind that. And that is that it allows us to make minute adjustments on the fader. So if I need to make a very small adjustment upwards, or downwards, I'm able to do that without really having to worry about how much am I changing because the changes here are very small. Whereas if my fader was near the bottom, I would have uh, potentially very large changes even though I'm moving the fader only a small amount. And so that is the fader as such. Now, how does it relate back to the gain? Well, if your gain is set at a certain amount, it will affect where that fader rides when you're uh, using that channel. And so as an example, if your gain is set too high, your fader might be uh, down near the bottom if your gain is too high. And you may only be able to make adjustments in this area. If your gain is too low, then you might be near the top all the time and it might be difficult for you 
to be able to set your volume. But if you're going to set properly, your volume should be near that zero mark, maybe a little below, a little above, and that's fine to have small variations, but it should be somewhere near that zero mark. So that's the intent, is to be able to set that for uh, a proper gain to be near zero. Because the zero, in essence, the reason there's a zero is that if your gain is set properly and it passes through the mixer, uh, then there would be zero change on that gain before it hits the output. And that's really, in essence, what you're trying to do. When you're using that at its optimum setting, you want your fader at zero, because then it optimally allows that volume to go through. And if you need a slight increase, you can make a slight increase. If you need a slight decrease, you can make a slight decrease. If you need it off, you can run the fader down. Uh, or if you need to blend, maybe you're blending voices, you might blend some voices uh, you know, five or ten below if you need them to be, you know, less noticeable or even half the volume of another voice. So it gives you that possibility. So now let's look at setting up the input fader. So when we set that up, we'll be setting it up either for something like a microphone, an instrument, a laptop, or maybe something like a CD or Blu-ray player. And how that works now is a microphone is, doesn't have as much volume output on it. So you're going to need to turn that gain up higher. Same like an instrument, like an acoustic guitar or electric guitar that is just plugged in directly to, to the mixer, maybe through some kind of adapter like a DI box. That will require more gain than, let's say, uh, a keyboard or let's say a CD player or a Blu-ray player or a laptop because those will have a much higher output on it and will require less gain. And so normally you would want more gain for something like a microphone or, or a acoustic instrument and less gain for something from an amplified instrument or from some kind of electronic device. Now, if you do have a wireless microphone, some wireless microphones have adjustments on them or certain outputs for either mic level or line level. Mic level means you need more gain. Line level means you need less gain. So you would treat that accordingly because for all intents and purposes, devices like microphones and acoustic guitars and electric guitars would be more of a microphone level and devices more like a keyboard, a laptop, a CD, a Blu-ray player would be more like a line level. So now let's set up this input for our microphone because that's what we're going to be using is a microphone. And in front of me, I have a Sennheiser uh, E835 uh, handheld mic, which I'll be using for this. And what I wanted to show, and I'll just move this out of the way, and so that way we can uh, turn on the mixer. So this is a, a view of the mixer. So I have the microphone here. I'm going to uh, give a better shot of the mixer. So I am on input one. And what I want to do is I'm going to use my, uh, my PAFL. And the PAFL is pre or after fader level. And this is what shows how much volume there is on an input before it actually goes through the signal chain. So this is your gain, looking at your gain setting. And so how we adjust this is, and I'm just going to bring myself back in so that we can see, how we adjust this is, is that you get to about maybe three inches or so from a microphone and you adjust your gain up and down so that you find an area where as you're speaking in a normal tone that the volume is peaking somewhere near that bottom third. So it's kind of in that bottom third. And once you have that, your volume is kind of set where it should be. The reason is that you want to have it, let's say, with that sort of, you know, three inches away bottom third is to give you that flexibility. Because if you need to have a microphone used up close and somebody touches their lips to it and they start to sing loud into that microphone, then you want to make sure that it's not actually peaking. And if you noticed the fader, the uh, sorry, the view meters went up, but it didn't actually hit the red peaks. And so that means that our gain is set properly for this particular uh, input. And now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, mute my lavalier microphone and we'll put this one on so that we can hear that and I'll turn up the volume on it. So I'm going to do that now. And so you should be hearing me 
on the Sennheiser E835 now, and I'm somewhere about three inches away from the microphone. And that gives you sort of an idea of just setting it up with a uh, setting the gain uh, and also uh, setting the fader at zero. So my input fader is at zero, my output fader is at zero, and I have the, the gain set up for this input. So this will be a proper adjustment of the gain and the fader. Uh, and I'm going to switch back to my lav. And now I'm also going to show you the next step that we would take. And the, the procedure uh, for setting this up, whether it's a microphone, whether it is an instrument, a laptop, a CD, or Blu-ray player, would be pretty much the same. You can use your, your PAFL and look at the levels and kind of adjust it where you need to. And remember, more for something that's like a microphone and less for something like a line input. Um, so now I'm going to change over and show, yeah, we've adjusted the fader. Uh, so like I mentioned, the, the fader does have a zero setting. The highest precision of the fader is in that upper uh, end. And now the next thing we want to do is EQ for proximity effect. But before we um, actually EQ for that, we need to know what proximity effect is. And so um, it's to do with a microphone, to do with microphones that are um, directional or unidirectional, I should say. And it is an effect that as you are getting closer to a microphone, it actually increases the bass. So the closer you are, the more bass you have coming into the microphone. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this microphone back on and I will get back from the microphone and I'll increase the gain a little bit on the mixer. Um, and then I will get closer and I'll, as I get closer, I'll decrease the gain so that it's not too overbearing for you. But what you'll be listening for is to hear that sort of bass that increases. So I'm going to switch over. And now um, you should have... Uh, you should be able to hear me well on this microphone, the E835. And as I get closer to the microphone, I will bring down the gain a little bit so that you have sort of an idea of, you know, how it sounds as I get closer and closer and see that as I do get closer, you are noticing that the bass is increasing on the microphone to the point that now I'm even, my lips are even touching a little bit. So this is how proximity effect works and that increasing base. And what we do in order to correct for proximity effect is we put, uh, we EQ for that. And normally what we do is we adjust the high pass filter. So I'm going to show you how to do that on the mixer. So we do have here a high pass filter and on the high pass filter, and I don't know if I can do this or not quickly, but I'll try. Um, let's see if I can get this set up quickly, uh, although it's not great, uh, but you should be able to see um, the little uh, setting here on the, sorry, the little screen on the um, uh, mixer and uh, my high pass filter, I turn it on and if I set the value somewhere about 120 or so, that's about where I want to be. So I'm going to switch back to my handheld mic. And now I have that turned on and with the high pass filter on, if I had the high pass filter off, you would hear more bass. And with the high pass filter on, this is our correction for proximity effect. And as even if I try and get closer to the microphone, then you would still see or still hear that difference that it would uh, be reduced. Um, and so you don't have as much bass coming into the microphone and it makes it uh, a little better, a little clearer for you. And so the last thing, um, the last thing that we want to look at or uh, on this is uh, EQing for clarity. And normally on a Sennheiser microphone, like an E835, um, there's like little to no adjustment that is needed for clarity. They are very, very good and clear. Uh, and they cut through a mix very well. So uh, normally there's not much you need to do, but I am still going to show you 
what you would want to do, especially if you have a microphone like a Shure SM58 or, or some other microphone that's similar to that, that as you get closer, it really does get more difficult to hear and understand. And when you have a number of microphones and a number of instruments going, they can actually fall down and be below in that mix. And it just feels like it's difficult to hear and understand the words. And so normally it, what we would do is we would reduce the low mids and we would increase the high mids. And that's what provides that clarity. And so I'm just going to show that quickly on the mixer. And normally what I would do is adjust it in my EQ section where this is the gain for my low mids and this is the gain for my high mids on this mixer. And I'm going to shift over to uh, the little uh, screen so that you can see that. And I'm going to also shift to my... Uh, there I'm on the uh, E835. And uh, I, again, it's not needed on a Sennheiser mic, but if uh, I wanted to make a change, what I could do is take down the low mids um, a little bit uh, and increase the high mids a little bit. And this would be about what I would need, especially if I have something like a Shure uh, SM58 or maybe a Beta 58 or something like this. I may want to do something like this in order to clean up the sound on it. So. And so really, um, that is uh, how to properly configure input channels on your digital mixer. Um, if this has been helpful to you, I ask that you like the video. I also ask that you subscribe to see more. And again, like I said, uh, I'm making the videos for you. Uh, I want to help you. I want to um, help you feel more comfortable in what you do and to just be better at it. And so if you have any questions on you know, what mixers that you're using and how to do something on your mixer, please make a comment below. Tell me the type of mixer you have. Tell me you know, what you're having an issue with and, and, and I'll get back to you with uh, answers to, to help you to, to become better with that. I may even be able to reproduce some of that within videos as well. And I ask that you subscribe to see more videos like this. And um, I'm just so glad that you were able to make it here. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.